Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name's Ed, your friendly neighborhood junior doctor, and we're back with a little bit of bad medicine. A few weeks ago, I broke down an article looking at codes that doctors use to talk about you. It was pretty dubious at best. Some of those codes were pretty insulting and needless to say, it was basically a load of nonsense. But it had me thinking, there are actually some legit medical terms that had we come up with them nowadays, probably wouldn't happen because they are genuinely offensive. So in today's bad medicine, let's talk about them. First up, buffalo hump. And I want you to picture the scene. I was a medical student, asked to examine a patient and present my findings. And this particular patient had a fat pad on the back of their neck. And the doctor asked if any of us knew what it was. And then in front of us said it was called a buffalo hump, which I thought, dude, the patient can hear you. And that is what it's called. You will find that in the textbook. It's generally associated with long-term steroid use. And as I said, yeah, it's a little fat pad on the back of the neck. And that leads on to our next offensive term, moon face. And that's because people that on long-term steroid use can also get this too. And this is where you get a bit more fat deposits around the face, giving you a moon face. <laughs> Who thought? <laughs> that that was a good idea to call it. Not rounded face or facial changes associated with steroid use, but your face looks like a moon. What doctor thought that was appropriate? Next up, I want you to imagine you have an excess hair growth problem. What type of insults would you expect a high school bully to call you? Maybe something like a werewolf, and that is the exact <laughs> phrase we also use to describe a particular type of hair growth we call it werewolf syndrome it does have a more medical name hypertrichosis and you really would imagine that is a more appropriate name because it's describing the actual process and not some cultural reference to it you can imagine if this was named nowadays you wouldn't get close <laughs> to calling it that number four raccoon eyes and continuing the animal theme although raccoons sound cute raccoon eyes is not a laughing matter because it's a sign you've got a fracture of the base of your skull so there's bleeding that is pooling behind the eyes this has a technical term of periorbital ecchymosis but you often hear the term raccoon eyes and you would find that term in medical textbooks, sometimes also called panda eyes as well. It's probably not that offensive really, purely based on the cuteness of raccoons, but is it really appropriate? I don't know, it's easier to stick in your mind when you're learning it, I guess. Number five, claw hand. So any deformity that kind of leads to bending of the fingers we call a claw hand and it's most likely associated with nerve damage. So we can have damage to the ulnar nerve which leads to an ulnar claw. We can have damage to the median nerve which can lead to a claw called the hand of benediction which so called because it looks a little bit like you're being blessed by the Pope. I'm genuinely <laughs> not making that up. And an injury to the median nerve more distally, you get what's called an ape hand because of the disfigurement it does to the thumb. All of these phrases surely <laughs> would not help how self-conscious you'd be with a hand deformity. Number six, Caput Medusa. Now we're going all Latin here, getting a bit cultured. Caput Medusa translates to head of Medusa. You know, that Greek monster with snake for hair that if you look at, you turn to stone. Of course, that's an entirely appropriate thing to name something of someone's body. So what is it? It's when you get a distension of blood vessels around your belly button. So it looks like the snakes coming out from her hair. And this is a sign of quite advanced alcoholic liver disease. So the blood from your gut drains through the liver before it goes into your systemic circulation. But what can happen is if the liver is cirrhotic, the blood doesn't flow through as easily, you get an increase in the portal system, what we call portal hypertension. And so the blood must find new ways to get back into the systemic circulation. And one of those ways is to engorge the blood vessels around your belly button. And this is what causes Caput Medusa. Whoever thought of that must feel so proud of themselves for coming up with something so cultured. Number seven, pink puffer. Imagine 
that on your medical notes. You are a pink puffer. And as with all of these, these are genuinely in medical textbooks. We're gonna be looking up smoking related lung disease. And it says here, two classical phenotypes have been described, pink puffers and blue bloaters. Imagine either of them being written on your medical records. Seems pretty insensitive. So in COPD, of which smoking is the main cause, or there are other causes, you get damage to the lungs. So when COPD becomes really severe, people will become very short of breath, and that's because there's a buildup of carbon dioxide in the blood, and carbon dioxide is your main driver for your respiratory effort. So these people end up puffing, so end up breathing very quickly. But also in this lung disease, the chest may become hyper expanded and air might get trapped within the lung. And we refer to this clinical sign as another slightly offensive term. We call this a barrel chest. So as well as a pink puffer, someone with COPD may also present and look like a blue bloater and it's pretty much the same disease process going on underneath but over time your body gets used to having quite high carbon dioxide so it kind of ignores the sign so people don't tend to get as breathless but what that happens then is it responds to low oxygen so you end up becoming hypoxic so having low oxygen in the blood hence you look a bit more blue and this can be accompanied with heart failure and fluid retention, so edema, hence they become a bit swollen and bloated. So that's where we get the phrase of blue bloater. Again, both of these don't seem that sensitive. In reality though, it's never that simple. You don't get sort of present as a pink puffer or a blue bloater. It's kind of a combination of both of them. And where possible, we don't tend to use those phrases for obvious reasons. And it kind of takes us full circle because people with COPD may be on long-term steroids. So it's quite possible for us to say a patient is a blue bloater with a barrel chest, a buffalo hump, and a moon face. So there you have it. A bunch of medical terms that to me are pretty offensive, but I don't think we would name things like this anymore. In fact, there's a move away from eponymous names or naming things about how they look. It's much more about how they are. And we, we've seen this in COVID, haven't we? So we don't tend to name diseases out of where they originate from due to the kind of stigma, but actually what's intrinsically about the virus. Seems like a much more sensible way about naming things. So there you have it, a little bit more bad medicine for you to swallow. And I'm sure this list is by no means exhaustive. So any phrases that you've heard leave me a comment down below. I'd love to know about them. And if you have enjoyed this video, give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel too. I hope you're all well and I'll be back soon.